The ANC may have just bought its way into power once again. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the News in 5. I'm your host, Joe Emilio. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm not going to waste any time with this one, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to get straight into it. Half of South Africa's population are 100% dependent on state welfare. ANC leaders boast that this is a good thing. Unbelievable. The 350 Rand Social Relief of Distress Grant has seen the number of welfare recipients skyrocket to half the population of the country. The introduction of the grant at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 increased the number of those getting financial assistance from the government to a whopping 29 million. This number includes 18 million traditional recipients of state welfare, namely old age, child support and disability grants. The 350 Rand grant has added an additional 11 million state-dependent people. This means that 30 million of South Africa's 60 million citizens are now welfare recipients. This is just unbelievably shocking. And then they have the audacity to boast about it like it's the best thing since sliced bread. We are the only country here in Africa that is giving grants to almost half of its population because here in South Africa, there are 60 million people and 29 million people are getting money from the state every month. There is no other country in Africa that takes care of its people like we do here in South Africa. Having half your population on social welfare is not a good thing. And that's the thing about this article is that the ANC really fails to mention where this money comes from. We all know that the ANC is broke, but not once in the article do they thank the taxpayers. As a matter of fact, they just make it look like the ANC is just coughing up the money out of nowhere. For the first time on News in 5, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a guest. I've called in Chris Hatting from the Center for Risk Analysis. He is the head of policy over there, and he is also an economist. Chris, welcome to the show. And let me ask you something. Is having 50% or nearly 50% of your population on welfare a good thing or a bad thing? In my view, um, having nearly 50% of the population on some form of grant, I don't think it's a particularly good thing, either morally or practically. So... When I say morally, I mean I don't think it, it points to a life of dignity and agency to just consign people to receiving grants from the state. I think there's an element of, of paternalism, of I know better than you, of you can't make a life for yourself, so I'll give you a little bit of money every month. Um, the COVID grant, for example, that was introduced during lockdowns, that was 350 rand. I mean, is that really anything to exist on and to live a life of? Of, of agency and owning your, your life, putting uh, food on the table for yourself and your family, maybe starting a business, I don't think so particularly. And then just moving on to, to practically, I don't think it's, it's a good thing because you're creating ever more dependence on the state, so less organic economic activity, and also just much more pressure on the fiscus, which means more power for politicians and bureaucrats. And we know that those incentives and those systems tend to become perverse when they know that they have that power over people so they can hold it over people. They can tell them, vote for me or I'll take away your grant because this is all that you're going to get. So it, it's, a, it's a case of both moral and practical, um, I think, negative consequences when more and more people are forced into dependence on the state in the form of grants. So where exactly does the government get its funding for all these social grants? Ultimately, it comes from the taxpayer. Um, government doesn't have its own money. Uh, it can, of course, print money, and that leads to devaluation of currencies, as we've seen in socialist utopias throughout history. But when government tries to be somewhat fiscally responsible, tries to keep things on a somewhat even track, um, it has to get that money from the taxpayer, from the private sector, from economic activity, from taxpayer revenue, from the taxes that are generated when people go about their businesses, try and make a profit, and then they pay taxes to the government. As we know, the number of taxpayers has been on the decline in South Africa. That will likely continue for the, for the foreseeable future. And again, it's an unsustainable model. But you always have to keep in mind when a politician or a bureaucrat, and especially now as we head toward 2024 with the general election, um, there will be many promises, but those promises are funded ultimately by the taxpayer. So different departments will allocate resources, but it all comes from, from the fiscus, the national fiscus, and that ultimately is driven by the South African taxpayer. I mean, for example, taxes on, on your fuel. So don't be surprised when the fuel price increases in a few months because that's why, one way 
for government to raise uh, tax revenue. The, the VAT as well, that's not a particularly popular way to try and raise taxes, but it could be one way because it's applied across all goods in the economy. So it's factored into what businesses charge you when you buy your bread and milk, for example. So it's already factored into that. But again, you've got this issue of messed up incentives. So you've got bureaucrats who try and centrally plan people's lives and they collect tax revenue and then they think they know best how to spend it. So for example, they'll spend it on things like grants, for example, instead of maybe capacitating healthcare professionals or reforming education or giving people title deeds that will actually lead to more organic economic activity over the long run. It's very much a, a zero sum a view of spending money. It's focused on trying to, I think, uh, increase people's dependence on the state. And ultimately, that money will run, will, will run out at some point. Thanks, Chris. You've been most helpful. As a taxpayer myself, it's kind of enraging to know that your money is going towards either social grants to buy ANC votes, or it's going inside the pockets of the politicians, who at the same time spend no money to fix infrastructure, to solve the energy crisis that we have, to solve the crime crisis that we have in South Africa, but instead only care about themselves and do anything possible to make sure they stay in power. But let me know in the comment section below, what do you think of nearly 50% of the population of South Africa being on social grants? If you enjoyed this content, you may enjoy these videos. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, like, share, and subscribe. With that being said, stay safe, be kind to one another, and I'll see you at the next one. Cheers.